Hey, Bobby, congratulations. Thanks. We haven't, we haven't done anything yet, but we'll, uh, we'll take it. <laughs> it's pretty nice getting the number four pick. Uh, did you allow yourself to, to dream a little that you might move into this top four? Well, you know, you wake up today with, uh, you know, good energy and you want, um, you know, everyone, you know, positive thoughts. So it's obviously a possibility. You don't want to put too much certainty around it. But, you know, we, we felt good going into today. And, and obviously having Freddie up there is, is always uh, uh, a nice, uh, a nice good luck charm. Knowing what's at the top of that board right now, especially the top four picks, do you consider this, uh, is this a draft uh, or a franchise altering uh, draft position for you? You know, that's, that's, uh, it's pretty big, but I wouldn't say, you know, it, it's, you don't want to say it yet. Listen, it's a, it's a silver lining on a tough season and, but the work starts now. And I think, you know, for us, we, um, the jump from seven to four is, is meaningful for us. Um, as far as franchise altering, obviously it depends on the player and who gets selected and, you know, ultimately what the player becomes, um, but it does, you know, increase our, increase our odds here. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bobby. Yep. We'll go to Eric Kareen. Hey, Bobby. Thanks for taking the time tonight. Um, I was wondering, the higher up you go on a board, does do you think that makes it more likely that you pick talent over need, less likely? Does it matter? At all? Does it change things at all? What's your view on that? No, I mean, I think it's always, as you know, we always take best available and talent kind of, um, you know, we feel with our system, we can, um, in our development program, kind of we'll take that and we'll mold it. Um, and especially in, the, in this part of the draft. So uh, I don't think it changes it. I think we're always a, a best available team. That's all I got. Thanks, Bobby. Yep. Thanks, Eric. We'll go to Josh. Hey, Bobby. Thanks for doing this. Um, you guys as a front office have only done this lottery thing once before. It, fortunately, something that you're not used to. What was it like for you guys sort of sitting through this and watching this unfold? <laughs> you can imagine incredibly stressful. Um, the, I guess the, the fun part about it that we all sat through is it's pretty quick. So it's not it's not too agonizing. They get, they get everything done there uh, fairly quickly um, on TV. Um, but, you know, it's it's a uh, you know, it's a bit of a, a double edged sword. Obviously, you're in this position because the, the season what, wasn't what you planned. Um, but it is obviously a, a bit of silver lining, as I said earlier. And uh, to that point, it's been a while since you've been in a lot in the lottery, you have a lottery pick. If everything goes according to plan, it's going to be a while until you're there again. Um, I don't want to use the word pressure, but how is it, how important is it to hit on this pick? Um, given the circumstances. Yeah, I think it's it's more of kind of a challenge and fun. You know, I think uh, to your point, we haven't, um, you know, fortunately been in this position uh, much in the past. And so for us, it's it's a great challenge. It's a it's a great project for us to really dive into. Um, so, so from that perspective, I think we, we view it more, um, you know, less pressure and more challenge. And, and just one more quick one. How quickly do you guys plan to start the uh, workout process? Yeah, good one. You know, we've already started doing that. And, um, you know, there's the opportunity here in Chicago, as, as, as some of you know, to, to go watch some pro days. Um, but, uh, you know, we've already kind of had dates scheduled in the books. This obviously, uh, you know, changes a bit of, of who the players are and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, as most people know, we'll be back in Tampa. Uh, so we'll get that going, you know, here sooner rather than later. Cool. Thanks, Bobby. Have a good night. Yeah. We'll go to Blake. Hey, Bobby. I uh just wondering who you like at 46 and 47. That's for you, Blake. Don't you? I thought, I thought you find all those guys. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be on there. I gotta, I gotta figure that out. I'm not, not used to having to prepare for a top four. Um, I, I'm curious how, or if you guys have gotten to that point in, in your process yet, um, this was the first year with the G league ignite team. So, so trying to pull, you know, what you saw from guys like green and Kaminga and Nick's and the others, versus what you see in the NCAA normally. Um, do you have a feel for, for what that's going to be like yet? Or, or is that still kind of something you're figuring out on the fly? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good one. I think um, first year for for a different set of prospects there. Um, I would say, you know, considering the state of the world, there's a lot of things different this year. So I don't, I don't view that one as, as, as meaningful as obviously, um, you know, playing under, you know, pandemic conditions. So I think for us, it'll, It'll be it'll be a good challenge for us to figure out, you know, the difference between 
you know, the G League season in college, or maybe there isn't anything. Uh, all right, thanks, Bobby. We'll go to Tim Reynolds from the AP. Thank you, Bobby. I just jumped on, so if you were asked this, I apologize, but I was no just worries. on. I was just on Houston Zoom with 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 Rafael, and he said that he thought it would be an unpleasant experience to watch the lottery, so he didn't watch it. He found out literally after the rest of the world found out where they were picking. I'm curious how you handled the nerves of the evening. Do you watch? Do you not watch? I guess how do you process all this energy when you literally can't control anything that's happening? You know, we were talking about it earlier. You know, we like the good positive vibe. So our group was together here and we watched it as a group and, you know, um, fully, fully understand where Rafael's coming from. It's, it's incredibly nerve wracking and, and, you know, um, pretty tense, but for us, you know, we watched it as a group and, and, uh, you know, got lucky. Thank you, Bobby. Thanks, Tim. We'll go to Steven. Hey, Bobby, thanks for doing this. Um, you, you mentioned how much like, like the, the jump from, from seven to, to four was, was kind of pretty big for you. So I, I just wanted to know just like, like, like as a general manager, like how many more, I guess, options and possibilities to, to, to the, does that jump kind of do for you in, in terms of not just, not just drafting, but also just like possibly in, in, in the trade market and just like overall from, from a team building perspective? Definitely. It's a good point. I think it's just, you know, the value from seven to four, even if you, even if you look at it historically, whether it's the player or trade, it, it's meaningful. And so here on it, you know, all of our options are open and, um, you know, as much as we love to pick, we're also, you know, going to see what, what, what that, um, what it kind of yields outside of the draft. Thank you. Uh, a couple more for you here, Bobby. Uh, we'll go to William Liu. Hey, Bobby. Um, I wanted to ask you, obviously this year, very, very, um, unique circumstances. Um, how did that affect the, the draft uh, prep process in terms of scouting and, and things like that, obviously with the you know difficulties of the global pandemic and all that? Yeah, it made it more difficult, right? I think, um, you know, early on in the college season, I think most, most, uh, most colleges didn't have, um, you know, live spectators. Um, obviously we watch a ton on film and uh, I think we've gotten, you know, people recall we did go through this last year with, you know, limited um, in-person scouting. So I think, um, you know, last year was the first draft and kind of we went into this year knowing that. But, we, you know, we were able to go out and see some guys and, and obviously we have a big scouting staff that's all over the world. Um, so I'd say like probably last year was more of the change, whereas this year was, you know, at least we had one year under our belt of making that decision, um, I guess, in the 2020 draft that are, you know, similar conditions to this year. And um, a different question, but... Um... You know, I really wouldn't ask this unless there was speculation around it. But um, in terms of the normal draft process, has Masai's involvement been the same as it's been the last six, seven years, obviously having a very uh, key voice in, you know, what's uh, the, the draft strategy? Yep, exactly the same. Okay, thank you. We'll go to Aaron. Hey, Bobby, uh, sort of following up um, Blake's question. How do you anticipate or, or how much, how difficult is it to prepare to scout those G League guys? I imagine you run some numbers and comparisons, but is it different because it's sort of unprecedented the way they've, their season went with comparisons and stuff? Well, yeah, you don't have, you don't have the historical basis, right? I mean, I think maybe there were some, some players in the past in the G League that were draft eligible, but not obviously, um, you know, high in the draft. Um, having said that, like we've, you know, we've all watched a ton of G league games and I think we know the caliber of the G league. Um, so, and not, you know, we also had the G league bubble, you know, fairly close to Tampa. So we were able to go down there as well. How would you compare the talent in the G league to sort of high end um, college hoops? It's different. You know, they're grown men, they're professionals. I think the, the, the physicality of it is different. It's all the, the things, you know, and, and you see, um, I think, the age is different, right? They're, they're typically younger uh, than college. College is obviously a bit more of a, a level playing field. Um, but all things considered, I think it's a, it's a good evaluatory uh, grounds to watch these guys. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, one more for you, Bobby. We will go back to Eric. Will mentioned Masai by name, so I don't have to try to covertly ask that question. Um, I'll just ask, uh, who who was in the, you mentioned watching as a group, who was in the group uh, tonight and uh, where did you watch and what were the general reactions? 
Uh, so our entire front office, you, you know, probably too many to count. We're all here in, in Chicago for the draft combine. Um, and we just, you know, literally watched at a uh, local bar around the corner from where we were having dinner. So no, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, obviously the reactions once, you know, you get through 10, which is a, you know, unlikely and then nine and eight had a bit more and then seven. And so once, you know, each one of those kind of ticks off, um, you know, a bit more excitement builds. And, and once you don't see your name at seven, then, you know, you're in the top four. So. Did you, did you, sorry, this is just a procedural question. Did you guys have a, a rep at the drawing or was that not done this year? It was, Teresa was there. 